Hello everybody, welcome back to my Daily Dose with Tim. Today is Season 1, Episode 32. So as a lot of you guys know, as promised from yesterday, because yesterday we titled our little episode, To Burr or Not To Burr? That is the question. And as you guys know, as we go on, I really want to make sure that every time we introduce a concept, especially when it comes to real estate investing strategies, I want to make sure that you do understand how the numbers actually work because at the end of the day, that's really what it ultimately is about. Simply because of the fact that every time we're talking about investing, it's all about removing the emotions out of the equation and let the numbers speak for themselves. And so as promised to all of you yesterday, I'm going to be going over a very high level Burr math concept. And so usually in our role, we just call that deal analysis. So let's dive quickly into it oh by the way for those of you who might be just kind of hopping on hopping in on this episode with us for the very very first time you know that my daily dose ever since episode 21 this season we've been focusing a lot more on business mindset as well as real estate investing strategies and yesterday we talked about the bird method if you're in the industry i'm pretty sure you already know what that means for those of you though who have never heard of it burr is basically well not like burr i mean i know a lot of us are canadians however we're talking about buy renovate rent refinance and repeat so it's been one of the most popular processes that a lot of the investors actually utilize and once again it's actually one of the oldest equations possible or oldest process possible for any business people that want to scale up because it's all about building in the equity so that you can take some money out to increase the performance of your money and by that i mean increasing your cash on cash return typically speaking so I'm going to skip that now so that we can get to it. For those of you who are actually not uh, really actively investing, you might not have access to, an, to a very, very useful app that we use here in Canada. So for my Canadian investors, uh, a quick app that I want to introduce guys all to is called the Canadian Mortgage App. So I don't know if you can see this right now. There we go. It's a little greenhouse on it and it's the Canadian Mortgage App. So if you don't have it, make sure you definitely download it and then just go through the initial setup. It's a completely free app and it's a super handy tool. And for those of you who are always kind of bopping around having to Google or go on different banks' websites to really calculate the mortgage payments, if you're on a desktop, usually where we go is ratehub.ca. So don't worry about that right now. I'm going to put it down in the comments section for you so it's a lot easier for you to stay uh, so stay on top of things and keep track and come back to come back here in case you forget okay so follow me along here we're just going to deal with this equation right now so when it comes to the entire bird process okay so first thing first you need to find out what the a r v is because by definition if you're buying and renovating that's Basically, you're increasing the value of that property. It could be a highly distressed property or you're increasing the usage of that property. So for example, in the denser municipalities, so that's just a fancy way to say cities and towns. So in an area where the population is growing really, really fast, it's very, very common for a lot of people to see that, oh, all of a sudden we're gonna be finishing the basement and if we can actually sweep that or duplex that, depending on which area you're in, in Canada, across the country, then you're actually increasing the usage of that property. So technically speaking, one title now can now become two different income generating uh, properties in a way. And so, you, what you want to do is to make sure that you find out what we call the ARV, which is after repair value. You know what? I think I'm going to write it out for you guys. Make sure that you have your after repair value determined. And for those of you who might be a lot more seasoned, you know exactly how you can actually come up with your own ARV as well. However, for most of mere mortals, and honestly though, I just really believe in making sure that we continuously work with our power team members. And so on our power team members, as we covered at some point last week now, I covered the seven 
team members that you must have on your power team when it comes to real estate investing. One of them definitely is a realtor. So a realtor is a very good source for you to gain access to that information right off the bat. Okay. So provided that you do communicate very clear to your realtor, what the end product is going to look like so that they can potentially give you the best ARV possible. Okay. Just remember that that number is not always set in stone either. However, very, very important for you to gauge that. So if you're going to be buying, renovating, obviously you also want to make sure that you know your rental budget. Rental budget needs to be there. And then you want to know your performance. And then, cause this is what? Once you're done, you want to rent it out. That's your exit strategy, which is holding onto the property. And then you will go through the refinance process. And depending on how much you pull out, then you can wash, rinse, repeat, meaning you reinvest the equity that you are pulling out. And that's how we can scale our portfolio with the same pot of cash over and over and over again. So let's quickly go into this. So for example, if we're in a market and, and over the last couple of years, we do find that these markets are either on the East Coast or Central Canada. Really, we're talking about Toronto here or GTA or even the KWC area. And at times over the last three years, I would say, even the entire Golden Horseshoe area is really, really great for something like this. However, you can burr anywhere as long as you follow the right thought process and the right equation. It's all about making money in the buy, okay? So let's just say that we have a property that we know, let's say whatever it is that we're doing to it, the after repair value, I'm gonna keep this as simple as possible because I, I know I have a tendency to over explain it a little bit. However, that's just me because I really want people to understand the entire subject properly. And I understand that in this setting, sometimes I might have to take two, three, sometimes, sometimes even five episodes to really round out one concept. And that's totally fine. If that's what it takes, that's what I'm going to do for you guys, because it is about money. It is about investing. So it is important and imperative, really not just important. It's imperative that everybody understands how the money is made. However, more importantly, how you actually control the entire process so that you can still make that money. Okay. So from an ARV standpoint, let's just say that if this property has an estimated after repair value of say $720,000. Okay. And right now we can probably say safely picking it up. I'm just going to use the red here on the buy. So the purchase price, let's just say is $435,000 and the renovate portion, let's say our budget. Okay. To get it to the point where we want it to be, let's say we need to factor in $140,000 for example. So for simplicity's sake, and just to keep things very streamlined in terms of the thought process, I'm not going to really dive too, too deep into the whole fee scenarios, commissions and potential broker fees and whatever, because that still comes down uh, to how you structure a deal. Today, I'm just going to focus on analyzing a bird deal one-on-one -on -one and the thought process behind that only. Okay. So continue to walk with me. What that means is, Really, we're looking at how much money in 435, 140, 140, we're looking at 575. However, again, we understand that most people, most investors, especially, we always want our dollars to work harder for us, meaning we leverage. Okay. So what that really means is that for most people, when we're buying the property for $435,000, chances are we are getting a loan or a mortgage on that. So I'm just going to say, Hey, what if we can actually get not 80% loan to value? However, we're going to do a 70% loan to value mortgage. So what that really means is, well, from a down payment perspective, 435,000. So take out your calculator. Now it could be a traditional calculator like this, or just simply use your phone. Okay. So that means the down payment alone is going to be 25%. So, 25% on the down payment on this property works out to be 108,750. So really actual 
money that you have to put into your the deal to get into the deal remember money in money out how long and how's my money secure right so first thing money in how much money do we have to put in well let's take a look 108750 plus we've got to come up with a reno okay so you add those two together total money in is 140 and then plus the 108 750 I already say I'm not factoring fees in there, so I'm not about to start doing that to confuse everybody. So really, 208750 is what we will look at in terms of money in at the moment, okay? So I want you guys to remember that number, 248750. Now, depending on how long this entire process takes, which is the reno stage, let's just say that we're done with the reno, maybe three months from now, four months from now, six months from now, eight months from now, okay? Whatever the case may be, we know that that property, let's remember that number two, is worth 720000 So assuming that we're renting it out, we're not even going to go into performance yet, okay? So at ARV of $720,000, once the property is done up, well... Let's just keep the refinancing loan to value about the same house that, or exactly the same. That's really what I meant to say, exactly the same. So let's take out our little calculator here once again, which is 720 times 0.75. So 75%, okay, is 540,000. Is 540,000. So this, is, I'm going to write this down for you, is the refi, okay? So I want you to see this number as money into your pocket at the moment. However, do we own that property free and clear? No, we don't. Remember, we got a mortgage on it. So that means in order for us to actually really calculate how much money we're leaving in the deal altogether, we have to remember to still count how much we got to pay out. So money going in, money going out the other way. So this is where we will use our little calculator here, okay? So if we go into the Canadian Mortgage app, it kind of looks like this right now. And so basically the second window you'll see is what they call the purchase calculator. So home price, well, when we first bought that property, we already said that we bought it for 435,000. So let's type that in. And so for some of you, you might be going, well, why did you pick up a calculator when we can just do it here? You can do it either way. I'm showing you two ways to do this, okay? So down payment, you can click on that window and right down here, ooh, I gotta get a little closer for you. So right down here, if you've never used this before, you'll find the percentage mark, because we said 25% is our down payment. So you'll see the exact same number that we just got, which was 108,750. Okay, it'll calculate the loan amount. And obviously, I mean, this is really a short-term loan. And this is why for a lot of the professional investors who are burring all the time, they're actually borrowing quick cash, which means it's interest only usually. However, let's just come back here. And again, we're not factoring in any fees at the moment. Okay, I want to make that very, very clear. This is all about the thought process. And so let's say, you know what, we managed to get a variable because, again, that's how what we usually want to lean towards anyway. There's a whole other reason behind it. Maybe that's another episode right there. <laughs> so amortization, um, at the moment, I don't really care. So you can do 25, you can do 30. It all depends on what you ultimately qualify for. So let's just say, let's keep it at 30 for now. And so that means every month you have a mortgage payment of 1375. So that's part of your holding costs, which we're not counting just yet at the moment okay what i'm going to tell you is that we actually whoopsie we will actually count that towards the overall rental process and budget that's usually where we count it in a scenario like this is your part of your holding cost so the whole point is well let's find out how much money do we actually owe at the very end okay 
Now, I wanted to walk you through that process just so that you learn how to use another tool. If you've got questions, feel free to reach out to me. However, the whole point is usually, usually, ideally, you're not going past the one year mark with your renovations unless you're building a brand new house. Then in that case, you're not borrowing anymore. This is a complete new infill or land development kind of situation. I want to just stress the fact that basically what we're doing here is I want to make sure that you understand the mortgage balance at the end of the day, especially if it's short term, you're probably paying down the entire amount that you're borrowing. So if you're going with the traditional lending way, you might actually end up paying a little bit more because of fees and penalties potentially incurring. That's why earlier I did mention that most professionals that are doing this quite a lot, they actually borrow private money. And in, by that, I really mean that the rates are tend to be a little higher. However, they get things done faster and there's usually uh, very flexible terms because they understand what it is uh, what it is that you are looking to accomplish and they already know how much in, how much out, how long, and how is their money secured against your deal. So all that being said is that, well, 540 coming out. However, let's just remember, okay, the mortgage balance at the moment is 320. I'm not taking out any principal pay down, okay? 326, 250. So this is your mortgage uh, pay down, okay? And how much, okay? How much did we actually, actually, okay, have to put into the deal originally ourselves? I did ask you to write it down, however, I didn't write it down on this side, which is 248,750. So really, so I call that initial investment. You have 248,750. So let's add it really all up at this point. So I know some of you guys are now going, wait, hang on a second. Didn't he just do like a whole giant loop through this process by showing us my mortgage app? Absolutely, I mean, sorry, the Canadian mortgage app. I absolutely did. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I absolutely did. However, I wanna sh share with you the fact that there are different ways of looking at this. At the end of the day, if you know how to do the long road, you know how to do the shortcut. Because really, this number added together, let's take a look. 326250 plus 248750, which is the 575. And we actually already had that number earlier from Purchase and reno. Purchase and reno. It's the exact same number right here. Okay. I'm hoping that the dots will connect. If not, make sure you come back and watch it and rewatch it once again. And hopefully you understand why I took the long road with you in the first place so that you can actually see this is really truly how you should be calculating that just in case the numbers get a little bit bigger or more complicated. Okay. Now, we have 540 into the pocket and at the end of the day, it's still 575 out because that's how much we actually pay to get into the deal. That means at the end of all of this, we call this money left in. Money left in is the difference between 575 and 540. So really it's $35,000. Okay. I'm gonna ask you this. How much is the property worth right now? $720,000. When was the last time you were able to buy a property for $725,000? Sorry, value that $720,000 for $35,000. That is why Burr is so popular because again, typically speaking, even Okay, even if you didn't have to do any work, let's just say if you were to buy a property worth $720,000 and you're only able to take out a loan at 75%, because that's how most uneducated and amateur investors do things, right? They just go out and they shop, they get qualified for a mortgage, depending on a lot of different factors, maybe they don't get 80% loan to value. That means they got to come up with $180,000. And depending on the provinces or the cities and the states that you're in, there might be other fees and taxes for land transfer and all that. So forget about that just for a few seconds. That means you need to pay $180,000 to acquire a property that's valued and worth 720. 
Whereas right now, we're buying a property that is worth $720,000 for $35,000. So think about that, okay? For some of you, <laughs> I know what you're thinking. If you can take $180,000, because that's the otherwise scenario, you divide it by $35,000. Okay, 180 divided by 35, that's 5.14. What does that number stand for? That number now stands for the fact that with the same amount of cash, so congratulations if you got $180,000 in your bank account right now. And if you actually went through the bird process, your 180 in this scenario can actually buy you five properties and change. That's what this means. So would you like to buy one property or five properties. I think that's an answer that you're going to have to come up for yourself. So this is something that I want to share with you guys today just because we went through the Burr concept yesterday. And so I promise you today that we're going to do a quick anal uh, analysis with you. And this is really very high level at the moment. Again, we can go into looking at performance and when to Burr and when not to Burr as well. So maybe that'll be tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see. Let me know if that's something that you want to see. I do have a couple of topics that I've already pre-planned for this week as well. I do think about these things ahead of time. I don't always script them out. So if you guys want to see something different, make sure you comment, you message me. And speaking of which, if you like what I'm putting out there, make sure you like it and you love it. I love all of you guys who are just not watching right now. You're also watching later on. If you like the content and it's adding value to you and to other people that you think can, to, can benefit from this, make sure you share this with them. And I really, really appreciate your engagement and your sharing because it's already been happening and it just really warms my heart because a lot of you guys know that this is really my true life mission. And it took me, it took me a long time to get to this point to really define that. So I want to put it out there for you. Give me the support support because I want to be able to elevate, help the general public elevate their financial literacy and their financial education, especially when it comes to real estate investing as well. So as you guys know, every single day, Monday to Friday, I will be coming to you Facebook Live at 4.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 5.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, and 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And right now, it's all about business mindset and real estate inv investing strategies. I thank you for always tuning in and watching after and all the encouragements and comments you have for me. And I enjoy all of that. I hope you're enjoying this too. So have a great evening, everybody. Live well.